Good evening and welcome. This is Sports Report and I have on my dramatic tie now because it's playoff time. Winner goes on, loser goes home. I'm Andy Mashaw. This is Matt Hatfield and across the state, better be ready. Teams trying to survive and advance in the postseason. And we'll start things off, Andy, in Norfolk as the Norview Pilots take on the Nansman River Warriors. Both teams riding four game winning streaks and both teams averaging over 38 points per game. The only matchup in the state with that, so it's going to be a shootout, right? Uh, not so much. 32 yard field goal by Ingram Coleman is no good to start things off. And that sort of sets the stage for what's actually a defensive battle. It was a defensive struggle all night long. Kyrie Landry trying to get the Warriors on the board first, rolling to his right, and he finds Marquise Bramer in the end zone for a 21-yard scoring strike. So the visiting Warriors on top first, seven to nothing. Here's Terrence Lambert up the middle. Oh, well, he's kind of up the middle. Then he goes backwards. Joseph Butts is not today, Lambert. Nansman River now with the lead trying to get a stop as that Norview offense has been high flying much of the year behind DJ Mack, the junior dual threat quarterback, offers on the table from Virginia, Virginia Tech, and this time he hits KJ Marks with the reception of 22 yards. Kevin was our player of the week a couple weeks ago, getting it done running and catching. Big gain there, but again, the defense steps up, they get no points. Here's Lambert once again, middle this time, no outside, and then he fumbles, coughed up, knocked out and recovered by Devon Watford for the Pilots, and maybe Norview can get something going. Good to see Watford back on the field after a shoulder injury kept him out of the regular season finale against Granby, making his presence felt on defense. Getting it done on offense, Anton Ashby, the guy they call Tank, hauling in the pass from DJ Mack, 35 yard gain as Norview crosses midfield. Threatening now, down by seven. It's the third quarter, there's only seven points on the board. This is a defensive struggle all the way around. Here's Mack rolling, Mack throwing, and that is caught in the end zone. It is once again Ashby, two catches in a row, 16 yard touchdown, extra point to tie the game. Oh no, no good, it's a one point lead, seven to six. Could come back to bite the Pilots, but they've now got the offense revved up a little bit here in that defense. Jalen Joe with the stop. He's no regular Joe as he drills Terrence Lambert right there. Go to the fourth quarter. Still a one point game. Nance River trying to hang on. Lambert not having any fun on the playoffs. Right now, Landry not having any fun on this pass. That's intercepted by guess who? Devon Watford. Another turnover for Watford. Second of the night, and that could be the play that sparks the Pilots. They have to capitalize on the takeaway, and Kevin Marks gets the run, makes a man miss. He's going to stretch for the pylon, and they're going to call him out the four-yard line, but it's okay. He gets another crack at it. But you can't throw the ball at the pylon. You have to hold on to it, but he was out of bounds before then anyway. Here he is again, though, up the middle from four yards out. Let him finish it. He does. Finishes strong. Touchdown run. 12-7 now. Now here's the extra point by Kuhlman, and it is blocked by the sophomore Gerard Stringer. They're going to try to run it back the other way, but you can't do that no, in high school can't, for points. Can't, can't do that. All right, 12-7, one last shot. Could they get something going? Here's Landry, under pressure, rolling, throws it out of bounds. Oh, wait a minute, now, now there's a question. Is he inside the tackle box? There's Deaton Cotton, coach from Norview, saying, wait, wait, no, no, he's out of bounds, you can't do that. And the referee says, yep, you're right, you can't do that. That's intentional grounding, and it's a big penalty because it hurts and almost ends the drive. I think Coach Cotton and the Norview home fans were urging on that penalty as it came late. And now with a chance to put the icing on the cake, it is Kevin Marks, and the comeback is complete. A 17-yard touchdown run as Norview scores 19 unanswered points. The Pilots push through and advance to the playoffs for the second straight year. In the second round, they win it over Nance River to end their four-game winning streak. Marks with 106 yards rushing, two touchdowns. Ashby had four catches for 73 yards, while Lambert and Stittman led the way for the Warriors in defeat. Other games in the 5A, Kikatan over Salem in the upset, 20-7. Keith Grandy with a block kick return for a score, and Najee Etheridge's pick six in the fourth quarter, propelling Kikatan past Salem, who will not make it to the region championship game in 5A South for a third straight year. Still now in the 5A, Indian River, the three seed, big victory over Bethel, 47 to seven. Tyan Smith's been running on defenses all year long, three touchdowns, 125 yards, and two interceptions for that Braves defense that keeps Bethel under 100 yards of offense. Well, we didn't get our shoot up, but we might get it in the Virginia Beach game with Ocean Lakes taking on the Southeastern District visitor from Chesapeake Western Branch. This game moved to Kellum High School due to field conditions. The Dolphins undefeated defending state champs, a tall order for Greg Gibson's Bruins. Well, you know, the Dolphins put up a lot of points. Let's see if they can keep that rolling. This is Kalen LeBourne on the kickoff. 
gets to the outside and continues down the outside across midfield all the way down to around the 35 yard line. That's where they start on the first play of the game. LeBourne came in averaging over 13 yards per carry and about 30, 40 yards per kick return. And this time they'll just run it in for seven yards, hurting his average just a little bit. The yeah. Dolphins don't mind it because guess what? They're on top seven to nothing. Yeah, you hit when that end zone gets in the way and cuts off big runs like that. Extra point is tipped, but goes through anyway, and it's a seven nothing lead for the Dolphins. James Hammer time with that extra point. He'd be a perfect seven of seven on extra points. And you know what? He's also the guy helping on these onside kicks, which the Dolphins recover. Chris Scott's team getting it done with Tylen McElhinney on the recovery. And then Justin Smith running with power through for a three yard touchdown run. Those sneaky, tricky Dolphins. Western Branch trying to get back into it though. Here's Jacob Wilson and uh oh, he gets slammed backwards by Trey Hubbard on the sack. So many pass rushing threats for that Dolphins defense with Hubbard, Dedron Baycoat, and Eric Crosby. And there you see the defense also laying the wood with Levante Taylor, the number five, Ooh. five star from Florida State. He's a corner, but he also is physical too. And now Keith Bryant going to try to get in for a touchdown. This time he's finally brought down by Taylor at the one yard line. That means it's sneak time. Down to the one, and yeah, they got a big line there. That helps when you got Jacob Wilson. The one yard sneak keeps it himself, cuts the lead in half. Western Branch saying, hold on now, 14-7, we're not done yet. Yeah, batting valiantly, only down by seven early in the second quarter, but Cody Cunningham and Ocean Lakes, you know you can't keep the offense down for long, and stopping them is a chore because they can throw it, they can run it, they have multiple quarterbacks, and three or four playmakers at running back and wide receiver. Yeah, that's one of the two quarterbacks. They can both do that. This is a run right up the middle for LeBourne. It's a three-yard touchdown run. He's got these short touchdown runs, but they'll take the points. 21-7, Dolphin. And now that Ocean Lakes defense trying to get after Wilson. Again, he drops back to throw. Going to step up in the pocket, and then Deidre on Baker along with Crosby dumping him. Tough to block those guys coming at you full speed and Western Branch really out of their element. They like to run the football, but forced to throw. Into the third quarter. No, it's not a replay. It's Wilson trying to throw and it's Baycoat again on the sack. They're getting to know each other pretty good. Nice bow. Now Ocean Lakes has the ball back on offense and it'll be a deep pass down the field. No, it's not. Tyler DeSue had a man. He says, you know what? I want to do what Cunningham just did. I want to take this <laughs> thing. Eh, let's see if I can get in the midfield. Close to it at the 45 yard line before he is brought down as they have dual threat quarterbacks with the Dolphins now, and now they will hand it off to Kale LeBourne, and you know what the rest is going to be, a touchdown. So now he gets the longer yardage. That one's 18-yard touchdown run for LeBourne, and the Dolphins starting to pour it on here. They go up to 35-7. to seven. As they've now scored three straight touchdowns, Brandon Bird will Ooh. get met right away by Anthony Womack. Two-on-two two crime right there as both guys wearing jersey number two. Dolphins cheerleaders enjoying this one as Ocean Lake's trying to run its, run its winning streak to 26 games. Fourth quarter now, Andy, and now they will hand it off to Justin Smith again as he plows through from three yards out. Three yard touchdown run for Smith makes it 42 to seven. Ocean Lake's well, Western Ranch not done yet though. Here is Chad Turner through the middle. Turner finds some space. Can he get there? Ball comes out, but they give it to him. Touchdown, 38 yard run for Turner. And the encouraging thing for Coach Gibson and the Bruins is a lot of underclassmen on this team. And for Ocean Lakes, though, a lot of stars. Cunningham, one of them, as he runs up the middle there. And now Cunningham will air it out for one of their underclassmen stars, a sophomore, Jalen Smith, with the 26-yard touchdown reception. And that will pretty much do it for the Dolphins, who run away with another double-digit win, 49-21. to LeBourne with 191 yards rushing and three touchdowns to lead the way. Western Branch finishing its season at 6-5 and five overall. Always nice when you have two quarterbacks like that. Oscar Smith, the number one seed in the 6A, 48-13 over Kelly. Sean Mitchell leading the way with 242 yards and four touchdown passes, three of them to Josh Gray in the win. Also in the 6A, Grassfield and a nail biter, two overtimes it took, but they get over top of Woodside, 34 to 27. Woodside actually outgained Grassfield in this game, 322 to 211, but Grant Holloway with the game winning touchdown in the second overtime session as the Grizzlies get their rematch with Oscar Smith. Cox getting a rematch with Ocean Lakes. When we come back, we'll check out more highlights on Sports Report. Don't go anywhere. We've got Northside and Allegheny in Roanoke. Who's going to move on right here at Sports Report?
And welcome back to Sports Report alongside Andy Michal. I am Matthew Hatfield. Well, Andy, the Northside Vikings have a couple of state titles in the past decade, but you know, this time of year in the playoffs, upsets are always brewing. The number 15 seed Allegheny Mountaineers trying to be one of those teams to spring the upset against Northside and that stingy defense they have. Well, let's see how stingy it is. This is what stingy defense looks like. That is Austin Leffler getting hammered by Tyler Jones and getting nothing. Later on, it's Corey Williams up the middle to the one as Northside tries to get some points on the board. Uh-oh, that's not going to happen. Points on the board, you got to hold on to the football. Fumbled and picked up by Kyle Wolf, and Allegheny's got a shot here. They have a shot with that big red zone stand here, keeping Northside out of the end zone, and now it's that Northside defense again with the pressure. They come at you from all angles as Mark Lee driving back the Allegheny offense, and now it's going to be a punt, or is it? And he's going to fake and then no. try to punt it, and uh-oh, it got blocked there. Northside got it. It is scooped up and runs 16 yards for a touchdown by Philly Barkowitz, making all the people in PA proud. <laughs> Seven to nothing, Woodside, Northside, not Woodside, Northside. Here's a bouncing football picked up by eventually, there he is, JoJo Wampler picks it up. He gets away from a couple of tacklers. Uh-oh, now we got a problem. Oh, they do get him from behind, though, but a pretty good return, and it sets them up in good field position. Special teams weapons for Northside as well. That one-two punch on the ground with Trey Jackson, and there is Corey Williams. We mentioned him earlier as he runs it down inside the 40-yard line of Allegheny, and now you're starting to wear out that defense a little bit, loosening up, too, in the passing game, as is Josh Hardister finding Trey Jackson. He's going to see this one go all the way inside the 10-yard line before he's dragged out. He's a weapon running and catching the ball. Oh, see, that's what we call foreshadowing. Because here's Jackson on the run off the toss, lowers the shoulder at the pylon and gets in. Touchdown. It's now 14-0. Woodside. Northside. I keep talking on Woodside. It's Northside. Allegheny down by two touchdowns and now forced to punt from its own end. That's not good because Northside oh, will get that it guy again. on the other side of the field. And there is Action Jackson, Trey Jackson, taking it into the red zone. He doesn't quite get to the end zone, but he's brought down at the 15-yard line. And the Vikings, again, threatening. They will be brought back a little bit. But they say, you know what? We can take it in from about 30, 40 yards out, too, as they move it back into the red zone on that run. That's Williams right back up the middle, and he did so good the first time. Let's give it to him again. Little trap action up the middle, down to the two-yard line, maybe the one. We'll see where they give it to him at. Not quite in yet, though. Allegheny hanging strong, and three times. Oh, he goes underneath that time. Underneath three tacklers, Williams sneaks in on the one-yard touchdown run. 21-0, Northside. You know, Northside was not going to fumble again at the goal line after <laughs> doing it earlier in the ball game. And now Allegheny with the run here by Cade Nicely, the sophomore. Nicely done for him, the 10th grader. Now will go to the air and look for Derek Trembley, who brings nice it catch. in. What a catch. 30-yard score for the Mountaineers, who now trail it 21-6, fourth quarter. Can they complete this? Giving up yet, but here's Jackson on the direct snap. He's just going to take it to the outside. A little good gain here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, down the sidelines with the speed, sets up one block, and there it is. Goodbye, that's the end of that one. Let's get the uh, cap out for this one. This one's just about done. 75-yard touchdown run, 28-6, the final north side over Allegheny. A uh, terrific combo of Williams and Jackson combining for 235 yards rushing and three touchdowns while Trimbley had two receptions for 40 yards and a score as Allegheny is eliminated by Northside, who continues their quest for a state title. Group 2A West, it is Glenvar over Virginia High, 35-6. 16th straight win for the Highlanders, who are led by Daryl Mance's 269 yards and five touchdown runs. The Bearcats closing out their season at 6-5 overall. When we come back, Andy, we'll check in on some more high school football highlights, including the Bayside Marlins and the Cox Falcons. Might we get our shootout? Don't go anywhere. You'll find out right here on Sports Report. Welcome back to Sports Report. Round one of the playoffs continues here as we head back to the beach. It's the Bayside Marlins taking on the Cox Falcons, who have won three consecutive meetings with Bayside, including a 20 to nothing shutout earlier this season on a Monday night. Well, this one wasn't played on a Monday night. It was played on a Friday night at Cox High School, and the Falcons getting the football first. There's freshman Tavion Robinson. Look at him run. He's Ooh. fast for a ninth grader. 
Only problem is he doesn't secure the football. Oh, oh Tavion almost had a big kickoff return for a score. Great field position. Instead, it'll be Bayside recovering it there as it is Zaire McNeil with the recovery. But oh. guess what? Bayside puts it on the carpet. Well, you're going to hand off. You have to take the ball. Missed exchange there, and Cox gets it right back. Tough defense up front with Mikel Franklin, Jordan Williams, and crew. And Cole Johnson, the quarterback, committed to James Madison University with a 14-yard touchdown run. Falcons on top early. Well, here is Tyquee Scott gets to the, oh no, it's another fumble. He slipped, and Cox gets two fumbles. Now this is a fumble fix. Demasi with the recovery, Franklin with the force there, and Johnson rolling away from pressure, completing it to Demasi, getting a stiff arm there as he goes to the sideline for a good gain, and then Johnson showing his elusive ability there, escaping the pocket and completing it to Dijon Askew, and Askew, ooh, getting a block from Demasi, and will run in 46 yards for a touchdown as Cox has been able to muster more offense, 14 and nothing midway through the first quarter. I see what you did there. Caleb Brody up the middle this time, and he is hammered. Defense from the Cox, and then more offense from Cox is Johnson. Yeah, that's him again. Four yard run for a touchdown. Get used to that. 21 nothing, Cole Johnson and Cox. So it's a repeat of Monday Night Football when they played earlier this year, or is it? Phil Patterson doesn't want to go out that way, and what a catch down the field on Askew, receiving it from Dante Lamp of the South Carolina State Commit. He is fired up, and Michael Martinez, the freshman, will run it in for a six yard touchdown, Bayside showing some life. Yeah, they're coming right back here. Here's Demasi though, he gets to the outside. He breaks a couple of tackles and there he goes. Down the sidelines, one guy can catch him. It's Patterson, it's a foot race to the 40. Patterson, look at him coming up from behind and he dies, but he can't get him. Demasi, a 94 yard touchdown run. That got the Demasi posse at Cox High School on their feet there. Now down the field, Bayside again with some aerial fireworks. It's Armani Chapman, that guy who caught the game winner against Kellum with the touchdown reception from Lampley, Bayside catching up. At the halftime, all right, second half. It's a double reverse, it's a pass, it's Chapman to Patterson, who's by himself, the 10 yard line can't tackle him. It's a 34 yard touchdown, 28-20. Chapman throwing touchdowns and catching them. Sophomore doing it all there, and now it'll be Marcus Johnson with the catch, and then, oop, he makes a guy miss. Ooh, nifty footwork there, 45 yards to the house, and Cox's offense, you can't stop him, you can only hope to contain him. Yeah, we definitely have a shootout now, 35-20. Lampley's not done. Lampley over the middle and it's tipped and intercepted. Picked off by Michael Broccoletti. Good with cheese and a good interception. Now Johnson with that read option. Oh, he is so effective with that. Running in 27 yards for a score. He's got three rushing touchdowns, two passing touchdowns. Lampley, he's not going away quietly as he throws it down the field, brought in by Chapman. How did he pull that in? Uh, it was a pretty good catch, and here's another pretty good catch. Look at the one-handed grab by Patterson. Let's see it again. One-handed all the way, and he got two feet in. That counts in the NFL. That was it's, Odell Beckham-esque. That was amazing catch. And now Patterson again trying to get the Marlins down the field. It'll be a 20-yard reception. The team with the ball last might win this thing, uh, right? Nobody's playing defense anymore. Right up the middle is Brody. 20-yard <laughs> touchdown. And guess what? It's a game, 42-35. Cox now, all they have to do is run the clock out and they will advance the next round, but Bayside's defense will get a stop, so the Marlins get it back. Fourth and 10, 17 seconds. They need to go 86 yards, they need a miracle. Here's Lampley, down the field, got a man, no. but it is deflected by Jake Herslow, the game saver for Brad Nelson and the Falcons. They win it 42 to 35, what a game this was. Oh, he had a man there too. Johnson with 161 yards passing. Demasi with 120 yards on the ground, while Patterson with 127 yards receiving on nine catches, 15 completions for 196 yards for Lampley as the Falcons move on to play Ocean Lakes. What a thriller that was. <laughs> also in Group 6A, River Bend, a two-point squeaker over Colonial Forge, 16-14. Colonial Forge have been knocked out the last two years in the playoffs by Oscar Smith. They won't see the Tigers because Lance De Silva with the game winner as time expired from 33 yards out. Chantilly, 27-19 over James Madison in North Region play. Another upset as the 13th seed moves on. David Tomorrow with three touchdown passes, one of them to Corbin Sparks, who had six catches for 108 yards. Jason Gastrock with 123 yards passing and two touchdowns in the loss for the Warhawks. We continue around. It is South Lakes 35-28 over Oakton. I'm sure revenge is coming in basketball season. But for now, the 11 seed is done. And avoiding the upset, the Seahawks are as Devin Miles throws for 214 yards, three touchdown passes, two of them to Marvin Grunchy, who hauls in seven passes for 114 yards. 
Not done yet. More highlights coming up. Another big matchup, another potential shootout. Yeah, one and one. We might get two, Andy, as we have the Grafton Clippers, the number three seed in 4A East, taking on the number six seed Heritage Hurricanes. George Massenburg's Hurricanes have advanced in the playoffs each of the last two years. Can they make it the trifecta? Everybody's nice right now, shaking hands. It gets much less nice pretty quickly. Roy Johnson to the outside. He takes off, really good run there, out to around midfield. And a good sign for Heritage because they've lived on the passing game much there to get the running game going. But uh oh, uh -oh. a Jeremiah Boyd pass is deflected, intercepted. Noah Owens runs it in 30 yards for the touchdowns. And the Clipper fans, they're ecstatic at Bailey Field. They're leading at 7 0. Not done yet, though. Here's Shackleford. Trey Sean Shackleford. Look at the spin move, the B button there. He takes off. That's a good run. Finally, they knock him down right around the 33 yard line or so. Rafton's defense has come up with takeaways all year long. They got one early, but they're going to keep it on the ground. Heritage will and not let him rip the ball away as it is Shackleford with an 11 yard touchdown run. And that evens things up at seven going to the second quarter. All right, here we go. On the ground, look at this, this is the big guy. That is Trayvon Walker, and get used to this. Walker with a pounding run up the middle, about 15 yards, and then they toss it to the outside, a much smaller guy, and that's Isaiah Hawkins, and Hawkins takes it in, or takes it to the one, or the two, anyway, either way, it's, it's right up the middle for Walker. It's an easy Walker in for Walker, and get used to that guy in the end zone. Just a bowling ball, running with power, running with authority, as Grafton has Heritage doubled up 14 to seven but not for long because Boyd sees his man, Amanye Watson, his go-to target for a 70-yard touchdown pass, 75-yard touchdown pass. Heritage back on the board again as that duo of Watson and Jones, the receivers for Boyd, getting loose. 14 all, here's the fullback again, and this one is a much longer run. Look at Walker down the sidelines, a big guy just shoving guys off of him for a big game. And Grafton keeping it on the ground, Heritage countering with the passing attack, but this time Grafton will air it out with DJ Dobbins down the oh. field and a diving catch is made by Andrew Pace. Wow, what a reception there. Matt McLeod has to love that because it sets up Trayvon Walker. You know, nobody's tackled him from a yard out. You can't even see him. The referee's in the way, but trust me, he was in. It's a one-yard plunge and another touchdown. A scoreless third quarter, 21 to 14 to the fourth quarter where things get really interesting and dicey for the Heritage defense here as Trayvon Walker runs with another run, ripping it off here. 40 yards to the house, touchdown Clippers, 28 to 20. Heritage still has a chance though. This game's coming down to the wire. Here's another toss out. That's Hawkins to the outside. He gets a pretty good gain and they keep moving it on the ground. Hurricanes need to come up with a stop though and give the ball back to Boyd and company. Uh -oh. But Trayvon Walker is going to break away again. 57 yards to pay dirt. Could it be? Yes, he gets dragged into the end zone as he just keeps running. It takes three guys to bring him down. It takes a lot of guys to bring him down. 34, 28, 345 to go. Boyd not done yet. Boyd sets back, fires way downfield. Wide open is Brandon Jones. And he reels that in. And then once again, Boyd drops back over the middle. Work the first time. Let's do it again. Jones again inside the five. Worry about Watson Jones burns you. Worry about Jones Watson burns you. And this time the run in for Trayshawn Shackleford from two yards out of Heritage on the board, going for two. Jeremiah Boyd sees Jones and he will walk it in for the two point conversion. And the Hurricanes win a back and forth thriller, 35 to 34. Jones and Watson combining for 11 catches over 300 yards and two touchdowns while Trevon Walker, kudos to him in a losing effort. 21 carries, 250 yards and four touchdowns. Man. That's a, that's a shootout right there. Blake Taylor over Denby, 55 to 14, and one was a one-sided shootout. Daz Palmer accounting for 249 yards and five total touchdowns as Hank Slayer's Titans remain undefeated on the season. Also in Group 4A West, Amherst County, 29 to 22 over Pulaski County. That's too bad for Pulaski County. They knocked us yeah. out of the playoffs. So, so Phillips' team pulling the upset as Jordan Woodfolk hauls in the game-winning 38-yard touchdown pass from Trey Schuford who accounts for three scores for Amherst. 20 years ago, I still did it. Lafayette, 46 to 12 over Churchland in 4A. Kyle Johnson and Caleb Craigenbrink combining for four touchdown runs. Corey Goss throwing two touchdowns to Gary Williams, but not enough as the truckers fall, 46 to 12. And our player of the week, we just saw him, Jeremiah Boyd, the quarterback from Heritage, 17 of 31, 17 completions, but uh, that's a lot of yards. 
423 yards and two touchdowns. Most by a Peninsula District passer since Michael Vick 21 Ooh. years ago. Heritage will get a crack in their next game against the Lafayette Rams. Plenty of interesting action in the postseason from Group 6A down to 1A next week in the second round, and we'll see it next week right here with Andy Michaud. I'm Matt Hatfield. You've been watching the Cox Sports Report.